This is Distant Replay. Hello, friends, and welcome into a Minnesota here on Distant Replay Podcast. I'm Ben George. He is Mike Noto. Today, as we begin Masters Week, we are talking about the Masters and taking you through a little bit of the history of the TV coverage, which is so unique in sports, but it's one that really, if you're not aware of in golf, if you're not a big golf fan, you might just not understand and really have a good grasp of just how much the control the Masters has over their TV broadcast and really some of the little nuances that you'll find no in no other sporting event, but you'll find there at Augusta. So Mike, when I, when I threw out this idea to you, what was your first initial reaction when I said, hey, let's talk about the Masters TV coverage? My first reaction was I was going to make a hello, friends joke at some point, but you already did. So <laughs> that was my first reaction. Uh, but no, but, you know, it was, it was, hey, I know the Masters as a tournament as a whole is pretty quirky in how they do things compared to everyone else. And that kind, kind of is what makes it such a renowned and respected event. And it was interesting to see how that even related uh, – to the TV broadcast. So the TV's changed so much through the years, but it is one of the best viewing experiences you will find in sports for a couple of different reasons. First and the most obvious is the fact that you get to see so much golf. They only do, I think four breaks of like four, like it's a very limited commercial inventory. It's only a handful of minutes per hour that they can actually share, share. And, you know, working at ESPN, we knew that because, you know, working with the masters, uh, I did it a few years while I was at ESPN and you knew that inventory number one was super valuable. You didn't mess up getting that inventory onto the air when you could. The other part was you just don't have a lot of it, which makes for a great viewing experience. So we we'll kind of take you through kind of how this TV contract and these, this TV coverage has evolved through the years. Some of the uh, things you can't say during an Augusta broadcast and the, the members uh, make sure that you don't say it or else you will be blackballed. And a couple guys have been banned from the broadcast through the years. But also want to kind of point out just, you know, as old school as you think about Augusta National, how on the cutting edge they've been in terms of television broadcast and, and coverage and the like through the years. So the story begins in 1956. Mike CBS provided a half hour coverage on Friday and one hour on Saturday and Sunday of the broadcast. Now, if you don't realize it, CBS has had every single year of the broadcast. Did you realize that? Until we started researching it, I, I did not realize it. And more surprisingly is CBS and the Masters are on one-year contracts. Every single year gets renewed. And from what I read, and you could probably fill in the gaps for me here, is that the Masters is actually leaving money on the table, which they're okay with, by not committing to a broadcast partner for a little bit longer term. Is that correct? Yes, they, they could obviously sign and lock into a, a huge deal, right? Where like the USGA, I think, and Fox signed a deal a few years back. It was like 12 years, $93 million. I don't know how much each one of these deal, deals is every single year, but basically Augusta says, we want to give this to you at a really fair price, good price. But in exchange, we basically tell you how this event gets produced. Now there's, you know, there's obviously coordinating producers and, higher ups at CBS that, you know, direct the broadcast coverage and they have their say, but I think ultimately if Augusta is not comfortable with something, they can have it cut out. And that's the way it's been through the years. And you'd, you'd even see that by some of the things you can and can't say during a broadcast. And I sent you a list and there's a list floating around. And I, I don't know if they hand this out every year, if it's still, you know, something that's actually put into paper, but this was used back in the seventies. I think is when this one picture was taken that I sent to you. And it's like a list of things you can and can't say on the broadcast because it's a different level, Mike, uh, at Augusta National. Prestigious, right? Exclusive. You got to be careful with, with the way you phrase things, right? Including like the gallery. Gallery is a pretty common golf term. Don't you agree? Isn't that what you say? Yes, of course. Well, they're patrons, Mike, in Augusta, okay? If you're on the grounds, you are a patron. Don't ever say they are a crowd, right? Or a mob. You can't say that. Never talk about the money. At Augusta, you can't refer to the player's earnings. Never talk about the master's prize money. If there's some antics on the course, you got to de-emphasize the antics. Do not compare, I love this one, do not compare any holes at Augusta National with those at another golf course. How about this one, Mike? You probably got a kick out of this one. The water in front of the 13th green is not to be called Ray's Creek, but a tributary of Ray's Creek. And there is, and make no mistake about it, there are consequences for not following these rules. 
So they're not like these rules, a lot of rules you see in today's society where they're made and then someone violates them and there's no consequences. There, There is these rules. There have been consequences for <laughs> announcers not following them. Well, that takes us to 1965, Mike. Jack Whitaker took over as the lead announcer. What a gig, Mike. Lead announcer for the Masters. Well, the following year, 1966, he makes a comment to the gallery that's surrounding the 18th green. You've seen it. They're, they're 25, 30 rows deep around the 18th green. Called it a mob, Mike. The thing you cannot do. And maybe this comment's what actually had that added to the list of things you can't say. But he called it a mob around the 18th green. Probably a pretty accurate description. They're probably battling for space. Big group of people. Well, you know what happened, Mike? He got banned from the telecast by the Augusta National Chairman at the time, Clifford Roberts. He was on the sidelines for the next several years until a few years later, I think one of the broadcasters got sick or something and couldn't do it. So he was actually invited to, to be on the grounds to watch the tournament after a few years of not even being allowed there. And then they actually, when this guy couldn't broadcast, they bumped him up and brought him back into the booth. And so the good, like the, the, the good story here and the happy ending is that Jack Whitaker actually got the broadcast some masters despite this early mistake. Yeah. It's like Jack, my man, it's number one on the list. Number one on the list, man. I can't call him a mob. Come on, clean it up. The other note of a guy that did not follow the rules, Mike. Gary McCord. Are you familiar with Gary McCord? Uh, I'm not. Again, I read, read about him for this episode, but I was not familiar with him beforehand. Okay. Well, he's a uh, you know a, a guy that's always been around golf broadcasts. He's been with CBS for for many 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 years, and you know, very colorful guy, and uh, a guy that any golf fan would recognize on a broadcast. But he actually used to be on CBS's coverage of the Masters. But 1994. I believe it was. He was at the Masters, you know, working one of the – the Masters has your main two guys in the, in the 18th green that are anchoring the coverage, and they have guys on each hole, you know, make it, you know, kind of commentating the actual play on those individual holes. Well, he was on the 17th green, and he made the comment. Now, we don't officially know what the Masters got upset about, but he made a comment that the 17th green was so fast that it could have been bikini waxed. Okay, pretty funny, right? Pretty good line. You'd probably laugh. Probably probably uh, connects with the non-traditional golf fan, at least. And then he even mentioned that even worse for players who went behind that green, they'd be stuck with a lot of body bags. Meaning that once you get back there, you know, it basically kills the hole for you, right? Pretty, pretty simple. Those are the two lines that they think got Augusta to tell CBS, Gary McCord no longer welcomed on your broadcast. And from that point forward, from 94-4, and he has never been back on, Gary McCord is not a part of the Masters broadcast. And what's what's key to remember about McCord is what you just hit on. He's never gotten an explanation as to, <laughs> to specifically why he hasn't been invited back. I saw an interview with McCord where I don't know if he's forced to say this, but that he agrees with you know the Masters' decision to ban him from the broadcast. Um, sort of seems like a company line maybe he has to toe because he does broadcast other events for CBS, I'm assuming. And it's just a very, very strange situation. And he does make a good point. I think one of the interviews I read too, you know, talks about David Faraday, who's, I love David Faraday. He's one of my favorite, favorite broadcasters to listen to. He's just, he's awesome, hilarious. Um, and he's on this broadcast, but he's very edgy in a lot of things he says, and he's never been reprimanded. Maybe, the, maybe Augusta's evolved a little bit in that, in that regard too. I don't know, but definitely would not challenge them if I was on that broadcast ever would not say anything. There's been some really good broadcasters that have been on this coverage. Pat Summerall, Vin Scully used to anchor a hole through the years before Vin eventually went to NBC. When he went to uh, NBC, Vern Lundquist slid in to that spot on CBS's coverage, as did Brent Musburger, who was uh, part of that broadcast for a while. Some epic names were on this broadcast through the years. Yeah, I didn't realize Pat Summerall was on the broadcast for almost 30 years. Yeah. From 68 to 94, from what I read. I mean, we know Jim Nance from 1986 to, to, to still present day. I think, when, I think when people think of, you know, the certain events like the Masters or the Final Four, we kind of think of uh, he's synonymous with both those events. I mean, you know, my, our feelings about Vern Lundquist, if you listen to this podcast, I mean, I could listen to Vern uh, read a cookbook. <laughs> you love Uncle Vern. You know, the thing about this, the coverage too, and why it's, you know, there's, there's always this kind of like secrecy around Augusta. If you, you know, if you're a golf fan, you want to get through those gates and just see the grounds for the first time. And one of the, a lot of the, one of the main reasons why is for many, many years, you never had the opportunity to because coverage was so limited. I mean, in 77, CBS expanded to two hours on Saturday and two and a half hours on Sunday, the year after that. 
Uh, USA got involved, the USA Network, which, I mean, how many people even watched? Is that even around anymore? I'm not even sure. They, in 1982, took coverage over Thursdays and Fridays. So they slowly started expanding, Mike. But for the longest time, you wouldn't even see the front nine of this golf course on TV. Like, if you had never been there, you'd have no idea what the front nine would look like. I'm sure they'd have the animation, the graphics of how the hole laid out, but you'd have no clue of what it looked like, which is pretty amazing. But 2002, finally, finally, 2002, they decided they're going to show all 18 holes for the leaders and move coverage to four and a half hours. Does it sound absurd to you as a non-golf fan to not be showing all the golf in a final round of a major like that? Well, now that when you look back on it, it seems really absurd. And I would say this, as a very casual golf fan, it was a very good decision they made because 2002 was right before the Tiger Woods era. And if they're not covering the Tiger Woods era by showing every hole of him leading a major, I don't know if the sport takes off like it did. Yeah. By the way, I would mention they, they broadcast for the first time in HD in 2000, Mike. Did you even know that there was HD in 2000? I did not. Yeah. No. But That's, like you said, they, they for an old school organization, sometimes they're, they're a little bit ahead of the curve. Now, do you remember 2003 when uh, there was all this controversy around Martha Burke protesting the membership practices there with no female members? The Masters decided to, to just drop their sponsors altogether. Do you remember this? I don't remember that part of it. I mean, I remember any issue that a guy named Hootie Johnson is involved in, I remember, so... Well, what's I remember the Martha Burke, Hootie Johnson sort of showdown, but not the uh, the, the TV aspect of it. <laughs> well, what's amazing is this is why they do what they do, Augusta. They have so much control. Instead of kind of giving in to and, – and look, I'm not, I'm not taking sides here and saying what Augusta was doing was right with the membership practices. Just giving you the facts of the matter. But Augusta was just like, listen, you got a problem with it? So be it. It's a private club. You know what we're going to do? No sponsors this year. We're going commercial free. They went commercial free in 2003 and 2004, which think about how absurd that is, how much money is left on the table during that. That is crazy. And we're, we're peak Tiger Woods at that point, right? Peak Tiger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. So ESPN took over coverage in 2008. As I mentioned, it was fun to be a part of a few of those broadcasts. It's incredible. They continue to expand coverage in 2009. Finally got to five hours on CBS. ESPN's moved it to four and a half hours, Thursdays and Fridays. And now we finally get to see... So much coverage. We've gone from just 30 years ago in 1980 to four and a half total hours of coverage to today, over 18 hours of coverage. And I think what's even more remarkable is we talk about the cutting edge of things, right? So they've always been, and I remember the Masters even had a 3D production. You remember ESPN and 3D, that, that brief period where they were experimenting with a lot of 3D broadcasts? Yep, I remember that, yep. It was only like a year or two that it actually happened, but they had the World Cup during that time. I remember seeing the Masters in 3D and thinking it was incredible because you actually could kind of see the all the undulation on the greens and, and see how much these greens and the, and the fairways and the course was was sloping and changing, which you cannot see on TV. I thought it was awesome. I thought it would stick. It didn't, obviously. I was yeah, do you remember? There. I don't know if you remember. When they were first advertising uh, HDTV a lot, when it was kind of a newer thing that was becoming more mainstream, a lot of the commercials they used to show, or if you were in the store and you saw like the screen and how clear HD was on the TVs, they would use golf as a way to show how how crystal clear the picture was. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And it, it's a great example of it as well. You could see more, see you could just see better, and uh, that's what they were doing. But they were ahead on that. They were ahead on the 3D. And now they have an app, Mike. If you haven't downloaded it, I would highly recommend it. They do a great job with it. But this year, I mean, I think last year was the first time they showed they had every shot. So you could go click on a player, and go back and watch, see every shot on that hole. I think now in 2020, this year, I saw an ad that Scott Van Pelt was a part of where you can actually click on the app, follow a group, and see every single shot of that group live as it happens. And I think they said in between shots, they're going to kind of fill the gap and produce it with like highlights of what's going on around the course as well. So you could, in theory, if you, whether you're betting on a player or you're just a huge fan of a certain player, you can sit back and watch the entire round of that player through the app and still not be out of loop with having the other feeds. But it's a great, if it's not your first screen, it's a great second screen experience on top of the regular, the regular broadcast. But it just goes to show you how much they've embraced technology through the years to going from, you wouldn't even see the front nine for the longest time, wouldn't even see the first few holes, had no idea what they look like, to now you can see every single shot by every single player. Yeah, and, and, and all kidding aside, you could hear the excitement in Ben's voice as he's talking about this app, <laughs> and you can kind of see why it plays so well with, like, true golf fans, you know? 
and it's it in the masters offering things that sort of upping the ante and advancing coverage when again i think a lot of people including myself before i started researching this stuff we kind of looked at looked at them as a you know sort of an old school maybe backwards kind of way of doing things with the way they do some things but you really look into it and with this tv coverage and the the mobile app like ben just referred to they're at the forefront i think they're old school in the in the, in the sense that they're stubborn i think that's what people consider old school but uh, they're very forward thinking and they've done a very good job of that through the years. And I'm even curious this year, Mike, because 2020, no fans, it's, it's November. It's a very unique time, right? It's kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm curious to see what they do on the broadcast because they've been talking about, I read somewhere, the coordinating producer for CBS Sports is, is looking at different camera positions, looking at different drone shots that might be possible now that there are no fans out there. So this year you could see Augusta completely different than you've ever seen it before. Yeah, we've seen, this is, you think about it, this is the really the, one of the bigger events, you know, that, that most recent one, most recent bigger event that we've seen sort of change the way it has to do things. I mean, we saw the World Series, we saw the NBA Finals, and I'll be interested to see, uh, like you said, what new additions they make. Yeah, absolutely. So we wanted to kind of give you a quick run through the history and a look at to what's different about Augusta and their television coverage. Again, it'll be on ESPN and CBS this year. Uh, looking forward to it. It should be another outstanding event. And uh, just the, the future of the Masters is bright, but I just love this side of it, just the television and the coverage side of it, that you don't really, you don't really see the details and behind the curtain, but there's so much that goes into it with Augusta. So hopefully you got some, uh, some enjoyment out of this episode and we'll look forward to the Masters this weekend. So Michael's call it a day. Uh, remember, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and distantreplaypodcast.com. <laughs>